So today I've got this Acatherm CB315U Electrofusion welder to repair. Mainly service mainly, but I found a fault with it, so I need to repair that. I've done lots of videos on these things in the past. I've actually done video on this unit, I've actually done a video on one as well. And there's actually a slight display damage here. Nothing too bad, but there's a little bit. Can you kind of see this bleeding there? It's not too bad. It does weld. And I push this button. Beeps, push this button. Beeps, push this button. Beeps, push this button. Nothing. It's not recognising that button being pushed. And that is a button which has to work because that's a stop a world. Or if you get into the menu system and that sort of stuff. So that needs fixing. A bit inconvenient, but there you go. So I've opened the unit up and it's actually still had the factory seals on it. So this isn't one I've actually repaired before. I've repaired so many of them, it's a bit confusing. But obviously previously I've tested this one, it's been okay. And it's still factory sealed, so I've opened this up. I mean, it looks really good condition. This is 2017. Yeah, so this one's actually six years old. But it's in pretty good condition. Could be. I've had newer ones in this, which looks far worse. The button is right here. Just there, you can see the button there. Button there, button there. And it's also here and here. And I've already spotted a problem. Can you see what it is? Probably not. Let's get closer. Enhance. There is the button which is playing up. Can you see anything which is wrong with that? I certainly can. For some reason only three of the legs are soldered. Now that shouldn't matter unless that's not connected properly with another trace. So I'm not sure which, which pair it is. I can't remember if it's this way or that way. Also it looks like it might be a cold solder joint there as well. Can you see a crack there? I think so. So I think it's got bare solder joints and that was not even soldered. Now normally these switches Two legs are the same potential anyway, right? So that's got four legs. It's only actually got two connections because they're, they're joined together. But I can't remember if it's this way or that way. Um, but having one not soldered could be a problem because if it's got a trace going to this one, relying on that particular leg being good and nothing going to the other side, whichever side that may be, then um, that would cause the problem we're seeing. Because when I've tested this thing previously and I've seen it before, that button worked. So yeah, I think I just need to um, resolder that maybe. In fact, before I do that, let's get my multimeter out and actually try it and see if we can see what's going on. See which way it goes. Got the old Fluke 175 here. Let's see which ones are which. Up here. Okay, so it's top and bottom pair. So bottom pair go together. They do. And top pair go together. So go from there to here. If I touch the pad, sometimes I've got nothing there. So that's touching the pin. That's touching the pad. It's a bit flaky. Yeah, so yeah, touching the pad isn't getting anything, but touching the pin is. So if I resolder this, it might be right. Let's actually check, see if the switch operates by sticking the probes in, pushing the button. So let's do that. So I shove the probe in that pin there. I've got to try and do this a bit awkwardly. Always the way. So let's try that. Let's probe on there. Try and push the button. I'm not sure three to come off from the closing either. I don't see anything happening. Well, wow. that button is not compressing. So this like could be two problems. Not properly soldered, potentially a bad solder joint just there, and the button isn't actually pressing. But yeah, that wasn't right in the first place, so anyway, it probably didn't help. Let's replace the button. So I've released the circuit board by doing the screws in the front, swung it out of the way. And these are the, the white little dots here, the, the buttons themselves. And you can see this one here is actually worn through. Normally this, the stop button is the one that gets the least amount of use. So I'm guessing this has been playing up for a while. And I've been pushing it harder and harder and harder trying to make it work. And it's been damaging the front panel. It's not actually right through, but it's worn the coating off. I might, maybe, well, maybe it is cracked. I might even put some kind of sealant on there just to make sure I don't get any moisture come through it. I can get this switch out easy enough. It's a standard switch, nothing too special about it. Just desolder that switch, replace it, put a new one in. Got loads of those. So I've got my switch assortment just here, and this is one of the ones from the assortment. And it appeared to be a 13mm switch. The same height as 13mm, so one replacement switch. So I'll keep these sorts of things in stock. You always need it eventually. Well, I suppose the perk of having this switch not soldered in properly. I've only got to desolder three legs now. So I'm going to put some fresh solder on first. 
and then I'll desolder it. The fresh solder just helps it to flow and, and get moving a bit easier. I, mean, I could even just desolder it and leave it out and then um, well, put solder on, leave it out, then clean the holes out. That's the other way of doing it. Um, we'll see how desoldering works first with this. Use that out. No. It is not wanting to move. Right, Mr. Yellow Technique. That pin there is moving. Saw that moving. This one here. Definitely not soldered. Alright, let's try and pull these ones out. Just desolder it. And leave it a little bit. And the same on the top one. See it moving like I did the top one? Seems it might be the top one that's holding it. Anyway, we'll come out in a second. There you go, here it is. Let's clean these holes out. Put this switch in. Okay, I'll clean my desoldering gun, clean those holes out, I'm just gonna give it a clean with some IPA, then we can fit the new switch. Alright, it's cleaned up, let's put the switch in. It will only fit one way because they are slightly rectangular. Let's solder these in. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm even gonna solder all of them. <laughs> That took a bit more to get going, that one. I wasn't going to fly onto the pads for some reason. It's probably because that pad's been exposed to the air for six years since it was manufactured. Anyway, never mind. Sold it in now. Let's clean it again and I'll put it back together. Right, let's plug the power back in and I'll put it back together. Okay, maintenance alarm, that's fine. I know about that. Oh, look at the button. The button worked. Here, it beeps now too. And now we can get into the menu system and look at things. Maintenance was due two months ago. So, yep, that needs resetting. I've already tested it. That's what my test jig's over here for. Verify the outputs, correct, check the cables, check for safety, resistances, that sort of stuff, earth leakage insulation resistance, that kind of thing. So I've done all that testing already, so I know it's all good. But now, at least, we can get into the menu system and I can reset the alarms and what have you. Using this button here. Is that button playing up as well? That button's playing up as well. Now I put it back together. Now I put it all back together, I'm thinking I need to replace this one as well. Of course. Oh well, never mind, I'll replace that one as well, you don't need to see me do that. <laughs> but anyway, that one now works, which is brilliant. Right, replace the other switch, that was annoying. Anyway, it seems to have a function now, and I'm not having to push it hard. That's working properly now, so both of those switches are now good. So, happy with that. Now I can reset the maintenance alarm and fix it all up and hand it back.